This video is going to cover the basics of the waves topic for GCSE. If you'd like more specific information about particular waves, um, please see my other video. Now, first thing to note about all waves is that they transfer energy or information from one place to another. They do not transfer things. Let's say, for example, you're swimming in the deep ocean and a wave goes past you. You do not get transferred all the way to the shore. The wave just goes past you. You go up, you go down. So matter is not transferred in a wave. Now, let's go back to our diagram. Uh, there are some important labels you need to know about waves. Uh, the height of the wave, or half the height, is called the amplitude. Uh, the distance from one peak to the next, or one trough to the next, is called the wavelength. So the peak of the wave is the top bit of the wave, and the trough is the very bottom part of the wave down there. Now, as well as this labeling of the wave, you need to know about two different types of wave. The two types are called transverse and longitudinal waves. You've probably seen a demonstration of these two using a slinky, uh, like a curved piece of wire, um, and a transverse wave looks like this. My way of remembering it, it kind of looks like an S, uh, so transverse has got an S in it, whereas longitudinal doesn't. Now, uh, in a transverse waves on a slinky, um, it's really important to note that the oscillations that cause it go up and down, and the wave is moving left to right. So what we say then uh, for these oscillations, opposed to longitudinal waves, which are traveling in the same direction that the wave is moving in, kind of being pushed along left to right, and the wave is moving left to right. How we'd say that in words, and this is a really important definition, you've got to get this word perfect, is that for transverse waves, the oscillations are perpendicular, or at right angles or 90 degrees, to the direction of energy transfer, or the wave's energy transfer. For longitudinal, there only is only one word that changes. Um, instead of being perpendicular, the oscillations are parallel to the direction of the wave's energy transfer, so in the same direction. Now, I haven't written it down here, but it's really important to note some examples. Uh, longitudinal would be sound waves or ultrasound. Um, transverse would be any wave on the electromagnetic spectrum, which we'll come on to in a future video. Now, um, you need to know also about the frequency of a wave. So if a wave has a high frequency, it looks like this diagram here. And if it has a low frequency, it looks like this diagram here with a bigger wavelength for a lower frequency. Frequency we define um, as the number of waves or the number of oscillations in one second. So you can see on the high frequency, I've got lots more waves than the, the low frequency. And it's measured in Hertz HZ. So, um, for a sound wave, for example, a high frequency means a high pitch, and a low frequency means a low pitch. That's how it affects the sound you hear. Time period um, is the last definition we're going to look at today, um, which is the time taken for one complete oscillation of a wave. Very similar idea to wavelength, although wavelength is the length of the wave, time period is the time taken for one full oscillation. Now, um, Frequency can be calculated if you know the time period by doing 1 divided by the time period and vice versa. Uh, I've got to mention time period is in seconds, S. And if I wanted to calculate the speed of the wave, I would need two things. I would need to know the wave's frequency and also its wavelength. What I would then do to those two things is multiply them together to find the wave speed. There is a required practical on this, which I'm going to cover in a future video. Wave speed, just the same as regular speed, is measured in meters per second. Um, if you didn't know, frequency is technically per second, so that's where that unit comes from. Speed can also be measured for a wave if you know the distance and the time taken uh, for the wave to travel from one place to another, um, same as you would do with any other object like a car or a person or something like that. If, however, um, the, the distance travelled is for a wave that is undergoing an echo, so it is hitting a wall and bouncing back, um, what you'd have to do is to multiply the distance by 2 um, because it has kind of bounced back from the wall rather than just going straight there. So um, that's a brief uh, recap summary of...